Hello everybody, John Reina is back with a 2019 year in review. I'm a little late to the ball game here, but I had some things going on here in the room as you can currently see on the wall. We've uh, switched some things up. We've added a new jumbo 50 ball display case. We've added a few bats here on the side. We've switched some things up, make things look a little more presentable. Um, so I'm kind of pumped to share a little bit about that with you. Uh, so, you know, 2019, uh, you know, I have to say it's been uh, quite a year <clears throat> for me in collecting. Uh, kind of walk you through, you know, what I've, uh, I've finished and what I accomplished over the year. Um, I think the, the main three things was the following. So... Right down here, the 1954 um, Hall of Famers and Stars set was one of the things that I uh, completed. And I'm going to just kind of wing my tripod down here a little bit, kind of give you a little bit of a view. So that 54 set of Hall of Famers and Stars is, uh, you know, one of the major uh, pieces to the collection that I uh, uh, completed. Uh, next one over here is uh, my most recent video where I completed the 1955 Tops Hall of Famers and Stars. Uh, as you can see here, uh, all the uh, all the big uh, the big guns and the Kofax, the Clemente, and, and the 54, the Aaron, the K Line, the Banks, uh, so forth and so on. So those were two really big sets that I completed this year. So I was really excited to make sure that, uh, well, really excited just to get them done, uh, especially in a year's time. I would say the 55 uh, took me a little longer as I had a pretty good head start with the 54 because I bought the Aaron the previous year and that was really the, the, big, the big cost card. And then the Banks was second. So next up, uh, as we pan over here, uh, we have the third Hall of Fame cabinet. And while well, a lot of these baseballs you've seen already, I've done a video on this uh, previously, so I don't really want to sit here and bore you. I'm trying to make my camera here a little, a little more stable so it doesn't look crooked, but whatever. We all know that my video and technical skills and editing is horrendous. So as you can see, moving up through here, um, you picked up quite a bit, you know, from Tim Raines to Pudge Rodriguez to... Uh, we had Barry Larkin over here, Roberto Elamar, Alan Trammell, Paul Molitor. Picked up, uh, see, Edgar Martinez over here. We picked up Tom Glavin uh, and Smoltz, Chippa Jones, Randy Johnson, Vlad Guerrero. Uh, we picked up uh, Al Barlick over here, Red Sheen Deans. We picked up Ricky Henderson. We picked up, um, let's see, Dave Winfield. We picked up a Jim Tomey, a Trevor Hoffman. We picked up uh, another Ripken, uh, we picked up Jeff Bagwell, we picked up quite a few, uh, Tim Raines and Lee Smith all the way at the bottom. So we picked up quite a few uh, baseballs over this past year and it's been pretty exciting. So that's really been uh, some of the major things. Uh, moving forward, I did pick up this signed Bob Feller baseball bat and also too, a nice little addition to the collection was this uh, Hank Aaron signed bat. I uh, also picked up uh, some more, I guess, notable players, but not as, I would say, uh, prominent as Hank Aaron. But we got a Jose Canseco bat here with some cool inscri uh, inscriptions. Uh, Juice, the chemist, and I was right. <laughs> so I picked that up. A nice little uh, pickup. And down here in the bottom, forgive the glare and all the uh, terrible uh, closet uh, destruction that's in here. No one wants to see what's in there. And those are my horrible attempts at painting Bob Ross style. But we won't go into that. And on the bottom there, that's a Jim Palmer uh, signed baseball bat, despite him being a pitcher. On the top here also, too, we picked up a nice glove from the uh, 1930s. I believe it was the 30s, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a little while since I uh, recalled. Um, also, too, actually, we did a little more. We finished this display cabinet in here. We picked up quite a few things in this display cabinet. As you can see, we picked up some boxing memorabilia from a George Foreman and Vander Holyfield and uh, Roy Jones Jr. boxing gloves. Picked up a Tommy bat, uh, the baseball bat signed by some of the cast of A League of Their Own. Shout out to A League of Their Own uh, as well. Kate's got a great channel. Uh, we picked up that George Sisler uh, down here, that um, slab autograph through a mystery box. Yeah, we picked up uh, some uh, Mickey Mantle, uh, the Topps Giants card, and a uh, actual program from his... Um, uh, service uh, uh, when he passed away. 
And over here is the latest. So as you can see, I redid this wall. And this wall now is, uh, I think, maximized for space and maximized for, uh, you know, putting as much as I possibly can on there. I'm going to adjust the camera here and I'm going to squeak it up a little bit and try to get in a little closer and see if this will work. I don't know how that's going to do it. Let's see. Um, did this work? Yeah, I guess it did work. So I'll come up here a little closer and show you what's in this case. There's a lot of new pickups for uh, 2019. And again, I just got most of these in. So as we take a look here, this ball right here is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm right now working on a Hall of Fame run of signed baseballs. And at this stage of the game, you know, I a lot of people are just into cards. I mean, a lot of the people I'm subscribed to, it's slab cards, slabbed autos. Uh, I don't see a lot of baseballs anymore. That's always been my number one passion, um, signed baseballs. That's always been what I've enjoyed from when I was younger, going to Fenway Park and going to the games and spending six, seven hours before the game would even start waiting outside, trying to get some of the players from the visiting side to sign, you know, my baseball. That's always been a big thing for me. So I am, uh, you know, once the Ticket Leprechaun had run this contest in regards to, uh, you, you know, your Hall of Fame baseballs and who do you have uh, actually signed on a baseball, I was trying to wonder who I have. So He's got a spreadsheet. Uh, shout out to uh, Jake, the ticket leprechaun. He uh, has a spreadsheet where the kind of keep track of everything that you have. And right now I'm at about 55% out of all the Hall of Famers um, in the Baseball Hall of Fame uh, on baseball. So I have uh, just over 55%, which puts me right around about 150 plus uh, autographs on baseballs from Hall of Famers. So I'm working on that as we go. But I can tell you is, as I move forward, these are starting to get more and more expensive. So what I try to do is, if there are some Hall of Famers, you know, from the dead ball era, or before that, or even afterwards that I can get on baseballs, typically getting them on a baseball that is multi-signed is cheaper for me. I, again, I'm not in this for, you know, some single signed baseballs, spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm really in it just to get their signature on a ball and display it as best I can. Just to say that I have it, that means, you know, that's what keeps it fun for me and keeps me enjoying in the hobby. So these are the recent pickups. So right here we have a ball. It's a multi-signed ball. Right in the sweet spot is uh, notable Hall of Famers is Judy Johnson. Also on there we have Buck Leonard and Stanley Kowaleski. Uh, those are the three uh, major Hall of Famers that are on there. I picked up a beautiful Mariano Rivera signed baseball. We picked up Sparky Anderson. I picked up this Ted Simmons immediately when he was inducted. I had this uh, ready to go in my cart once he got inducted. It is not a uh, Hall of Fame 2020 ball. This is actually a St. Louis Hall of Fame inscription as at the time he obviously was not in the Hall of Fame, so he didn't sign his, uh, sign an inscription that way. So I wanted to get it because these have shot up in price and I wanted to get it before it got ridiculous. Uh, Burt Blylevin, Hal Newhauser, Mike Messina, Gary Carter, Joe Sewell, um, Mike Baseball Collector, actually just got a few of these on some uh, signed cards. I think the Sewell, uh, the, the Messina, and there was one other, I think it was Jack Morris, uh, who's next, if I'm not mistaken. And down here we picked up uh, Whitey Herzog, John Schuholz, he's uh, an executive, um, Lee McPhail, we actually signed it Leland Stanford McPhail, his full name. Greg Maddox, I'm thinking about doing something, putting a little uh, display, small display of Maddox, Glavin, and Thomas. Oh, hey, buddy. Look who came to say hi. Daddy. Daddy's making a video. Do you want to help? Mm -mm. All right, you don't have to. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and that's uh, my son and how much enjoyment he has uh, for, for baseball. So <laughs> let me shut this door and we'll, we'll continue on here. I hope this camera is not too shaky for you guys. But uh, moving right along, picked up a Bud Selig. Uh, again, these guys are in the Hall of Fame. So if they're in the Hall of Fame, I need them on a baseball. I picked up a beautiful Tony Gwen, Happy Chandler. And a couple of these, I've had these coming up. I just decided to move them from a different case into here. Uh, we have a nice Mike Piazza. Yes, that's Mike Piazza's signature. I got this personally from him at a game. 
It was a rush signature. So anyone who says, ah, it doesn't look like it, it looks like a forgery. He signed that for me at a game. Uh, he was walking in from the field uh, after batting practice. And I was right in the little sweet spot, which they used to call it at Fenway Park. He was heading into the, the locker room. And I nabbed him and he was able to sign it. So that is Mike Piazza, despite being a real sloppy signature. So I can guarantee you that's him. And uh, he actually only signed my baseball that day, which was kind of cool. Uh, this is a team sign. Uh Dodgers baseball from the early 90s, which has Eric Kairos and a rookie Mike Piazza signature. Believe it or not, it's actually right there to the side if you can see it. Right over there, that's Joe Torre. Believe it on, uh, on that baseball is also Bernie Williams, uh, who I liked actually when he was playing. I'll go here first. Bobby Cox. Uh, this also has on there Tom Glavin, John Smoltz, John Rocker, and Andrew Jones. Got those uh, personally at a game. And over here is... Derek Jeter, who is no doubt going to be in the Hall of Fame. And I got this in 1999 or 2000. This is a 1999 All-Star Game Ball. It's uh, got a lot of toning. And the reason being is I remember that day very clearly. It was an extremely hot day at Fenway Park. I, you know, at the time I was, I was still a kid. I think I was about 15, uh, 99, 14 or 15. And I had my sweaty hands all over that baseball. And I, you know, I, <laughs> there was not much I could do about it. And he signed it. The signature is, is, is holding up well for that, but I am not going to pay the prices for a Derek G or a single sign baseball right now. Um, no disrespect to Derek Jeter. I think he's a fantastic ball player. But I don't think he is a spending four to six hundred dollars on a sweet spot autograph uh, when I could spend that on a Ted Williams or another Mickey Mantle or a DiMaggio ball, which are going for relatively same price or pretty close. I've seen some Jeter sweet spot balls going for six hundred dollars, and I can't just justify spending that money on uh, on him. I just can't. I. He was a fantastic ball player. I mean, he was the Yankees for many years, him and Mariana Rivera. And I, you know, hats off to them, but I, I can't spend that money. I mean, Mariana Rivera, I picked up for a pretty decent price. DJ is just going for some crazy money. I also have a uh, Derek Jeter baseball down here. And I picked that up uh, at a game. With, uh, this is when I wasn't using official American League Baseball. This was when I was even younger. That was more rookie year, uh, Derek Jeter. And I was spending and I was using these sort of white plastic-ish type baseball signatures holding up fantastic. And I'm sure it probably still commands a few hundred dollars, but uh, it's not an official uh, you know, MLB ball. So, guys, it's uh, we're on 13 minutes. I don't want to keep any longer. Um, the last thing I did was I moved some photos and I put them above here um, so that uh, the Williams, Hank Greenberg, and Whitey Ford with Bob uh, Bob Friend on there, um, I put up on top. And I also put up here um, the DiMaggio Feller, the Bobby Thompson uh, shot her around the world picture, and my favorite Mickey Mantle photo uh, right up here. That is absolutely my favorite photo, uh, signed photo of him. It's one of, uh, in my opinion, a beautiful signature. And he, it, it, it's just one of my favorite photos. One of the few color photos that I do have in this room. Uh, just, just a gorgeous photo. So at any rate, guys, I'll keep this short. I'm pretty much done. This is what I've been collecting over the past year. Uh, I hope to make some changes. I might be moving some display cases and I might be adding in another card case over here uh, because I might be starting on the 1958 top set this year. Now I'm going to work on closing this up in here and uh, working on the 58 set. So... Uh, guys, I thank you. Uh, I want to thank G's Mikey uh, for shouting out my channel. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, he's He's got a fantastic collection. Uh, honestly, guys, if I had more technical skills and I could add links and all that stuff, I would. Uh, but, you know, thank you so much for shouting out my channel. And, uh, you know, I've definitely got a few more subscribers. So welcome. I appreciate it. I thank you guys for viewing everything. Uh, all my videos and, and sharing comments. I hope you like what you see here. Again, uh, I'll be posting uh, soon once I get some more pickups. I hope everyone had a great new year and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks a lot and have a great rest of the week.